Hey guys, what's going on? This is Apple Investigator here, and before I begin this video, I'd just like to wish you all a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays, whatever you're celebrating. I hope you have a great time to the end of December here, and a great New Year as well. Today, we'll be reviewing the iPad Air 2. Now, this video is long overdue, but I figured a bunch of you would be getting it for Christmas maybe, so you'd want to see a little video about it. So we'll get started talking about the design. And as we take a look at the Air 2 here, you can see that it looks very reminiscent to similar iPads that we've seen in the past. Uh, the design and form factor is essentially the same thing. There are a few cosmetic changes that we will go through, but from a first glance view, the iPad looks pretty much like the first generation iPad Air and even the generations before it. Not too many major changes with that full unibody aluminum construction that goes around the back of the device and then the glass 9.7 inch panel on the front. We did get those shrunken down bezels last year on the Air 1 and those are the same this year. We do have some changes however to the side of the device as well as the back side. So we have some new recessed volume buttons that are a little bit different than last year and we have some new mic placements as well. We have dual microphones that are placed beside the camera module and then on the side of the device and we are no longer seeing that mute and profile switch that has been removed. Taking a look at the thinness of the device it is extremely thin at just 6.1 millimeters. This device is just as thin as the iPod Touch 5th generation so it has shaved off quite a bit of uh, thickness to it and that looks all nice and all. We can also see we have some changes to the speaker grill, just one row of speakers now, and the lightning port on the bottom. The device is very thin, like I've mentioned, and in your hand it just feels incredibly thin and light. We can also see just from that side view now that we do still have that diamond cut chamfered edge that Apple has actually gone away with on many of the newer devices such as the iPhone 6. It is still prominent on the iPad which is nice. We also do have our 3.5mm audio jack as well as our lock switch which goes unchanged. Welcomed this year is also the addition of the Touch ID fingerprint sensor which is really a great addition to have. There's actually no reason why this couldn't have been on the iPad Air 1, but Apple likes to play games with its customers and make them wait the full amount of time. But anyways, this is really a nice feature. It works great all the time. All five of my family members have a fingerprint registered on here, so it's great to use this as a family. We can all log in and it's easy to use. Now like I did mention, the Air 2 feels extremely great in the hand. It just curves around your hand nicely and it's just got a nice form factor and that thin profile makes it even more enjoyable to use for long extended periods of time. Now we're going to get started here with the main features starting out with the display. It still features that Retina display, but this year it is called Retina HD. It still has that resolution of 2048 by 1536 and it's really beautiful to look at. Colors are vibrant and text is sharp and everything like that. This year though we do have the addition of an anti-glare or anti-reflective coating. So this just makes it more enjoyable to use outside in direct sunlight and if you've got uh, sunlight coming in through your windows or something like that you're not going to pick up as much glare. So that's a nice feature. It's a little bit noticeable. It's not entirely noticeable but it's definitely there and you can tell. Now just taking a look at the display of this device it's so great to read full-fledged magazines on here. I like reading Next Issue here in Canada and we just look at lots of different magazines and everything looks extremely clear and crisp on this display. It's also great for watching videos. Now let's take a look at the camera module now. It has received some pretty substantial upgrades. We will talk about that in just a sec. We also do have the front facing FaceTime HD camera which is great for FaceTiming and selfies. But that backside camera has been upgraded to an 8 megapixel eyesight with an f2.4 aperture, HD video at 1080p and 30 frames per second, as well as slow-mo video this year. And I did a video on that, it will be in the description. The iPad is a great device for taking photos as it provides an excellent large viewfinder. Let's take a look at a few sample photos that I snapped. I'm 
be home for Christmas. Now the new iPad Air 2 has received some pretty substantial performance upgrades. It now has an A8X processor which is faster than even the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus as well as the addition of 2 gigabytes of RAM and that processor is now tri-core so triple core performance as opposed to dual core which has received on every other iOS device in history. Now we're going to run through some basic Geekbench testing to test the single and multi-core threaded performance and then we'll get some scores. Now we do get 1814 on the single core and 4491 on the multi-core which is very high over last year's model. Now I did do some videos comparing this to the Nexus 9 and those will be listed in the description. Now this device also did receive the addition and upgrade of its Wi-Fi capabilities to 802.11 AC support. Now I do have an 802.11 AC uh, wireless Airport Extreme router. So just going through the basic speed tests here, this is basically the speeds that I normally get on my network close to 30 on the down and just below 5 on the up so this is pretty normal but what you may expect with the AC is some improved range and overall performance to your Wi-Fi so it's a welcomed addition and change now I've also run through GFX bench there very quickly and we are getting scores of 1526 on the Manhattan on screen and 2026 on the Manhattan off screen so you guys can check more videos about this out down below in the description. I did more extensive testing. Now let's take a look at iOS 8. And when iOS 8 first launched on the iPad Air 2, I was a little bit disappointed. It felt like it was not very optimized and Apple hadn't put much effort into bringing a tablet experience with their latest OS. But since iOS 8.1, they have addressed many of the bugs, the crashes, and just a lot of the problems that I was having uh, at the very beginning of this device's life. But since iOS 7, it has come so far. Because when iOS 7 came out, I was very disappointed. I had a boatload of issues, especially in Safari. Just a lot of crashing and unable to support certain things. And it was just a just a bad experience overall. But it seems like the iPad experience with iOS is, is very familiar. And uh, it's very fluid. It's fast. Everything seems to work well. One of the great advantages to the iPad over many other devices is the large array of apps available in the App Store. There is an app for just about anything you could possibly want to do. And that just makes it a great option over many of the other Android apps tablets which are great as well don't get me wrong the Nexus 9 looks like a great tablet despite its few little quirks in its build quality um, the Nexus 9 is also a great choice but for me this is the device of choice obviously and I just see a lot of apps that are optimized very nicely like Spotify so with the final verdict now the iPad Air 2 builds upon the great tablet that was established with the iPad Air 1 when you first pick up the device it is noticeably thinner and lighter even if you did own the iPad Air 1 last year the welcoming addition of Touch ID is a really great bonus for all users and in case you were wondering the battery life on this device is pretty great as well it has also gotten improved over the last couple iOS updates and it is a little worse than last year's I have to admit it, like maybe 30 40 minutes less I'm just getting over like nine hours of usage but I'm using my iPad pretty heavily so with normal usage on Apple's scale I'm sure it's about up to last year's anyways I hope you guys did enjoy this review if you did please be sure to hit that like button down below subscribe for more Merry Christmas and I'll see you in the next one